An original MCM production. Good morning, everybody. We'll call the commission uh, meeting to order. Will the uh, commission secretary please call the roll? Commissioner Bowles present, but out of the room, Commissioner Coggs is expected. Commissioner Eli? Here. Commissioner Granling? Here. Commissioner Harris Dodd? Here. Commissioner Krieger? Here. Commissioner Manzanet? Here. Commissioner Martinsuck? Here. Commissioner West? Here. Commissioner Hermes? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Approval of the proceedings of the regular commission meeting held March 28th. Move to approve. Second. Uh, any uh, additions or corrections to the minutes? Second. Yeah. Did you? Did the commission secretary get the? the yes. Mm -hmm. Is there further discussion on the minutes? Seeing none. Will the Commission check. Or, I'm sorry. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is carried. The minutes are so approved. Uh, new business item nine, 16-050-4, uh, resolution commending Commissioner Lyle Ballesteri for meritorious service and leadership on the commission of the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewer District. Do we have a uh, motion to approve the resolution. Mr. Chair, it would be my distinct uh, privilege and honor to uh, move the uh, resolution, adopt the resolution, move approval of the resolution commending Commissioner Lyle Balistrieri. Second. Okay. So we have the uh, motion by Commissioner Branley and uh, the second by Commissioner Bull. <laughs> Is there any discussion on the motion? <laughs> on the motion yeah. to approve, all in favor <laughs> signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? I would hope there'd be no opposition to this. <laughs> no <laughs> opposition. <laughs> you know, we've been very fortunate over uh, nine years uh, to have the service of Commissioner Balisari on this body. Um, it's not often that we see people complete the nine-year cycle. And this one's even more uh, special in that he's completed his nine years before his term ends, so he has to go out today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but all of us have learned from Commissioner Ballesteri and have uh, prospered uh, by that. The commission has prospered uh, through his leadership and his excellence. And the region, therefore, has prospered because of his ability to help us and guide us uh, through many important decisions through his nine years and tenure. I have before me a uh, resolution plaque uh, that I'm sure he'll hurry home to hang directly on his office wall. Uh, and I'll read a few of the clauses within it. Uh, Lyle, could you come up to the front, please? Uh, it's a good old government document and a lot of wherefore and whereases. Yeah, go to the resolve. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a couple of good, good ones that I'd like to get to. Uh, whereas through his advocacy as an organizer, representative with the Electrical Workers Local 494 and president of the Milwaukee Building and Construction Trades Council, he made far-reaching contributions to the region, uh, regional economy, negotiating <coughs> seven billion in union construction work on such major projects as Miller Park, Potawatomi Bingo Casino and Hotel, the then named Midwest Express Center, the Marquette Interchange, and the new power plants. And whereas Commissioner Ballesteri has been a tireless advocate for opening economic opportunities to small and local businesses in the region, 
resulting in 99 million or 22% of all MMSD awards to small women and minority owned firms over the past five years. While <coughs> awards to local firms in the last four years averaged nearly 50% of all procurements totaling more than 165 million. Now therefore be it resolved that the commissioners of the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewer District hereby extend to Lyle Ballesteri their sincere appreciation for uh, meritorious leadership and for dedicated service to the citizens and taxpayers of the Milwaukee metropolitan area. Lyle, on behalf of the commission, thank you very much. time finding a parking spot this morning because I don't have that commissioner anymore. <laughs> I just want to th say, um, you know, thanks. It's been a pleasure serving with all of you. I've served with many commissioners over the years, and um, uh, this, this is a, a wonderful plaque. I, I got lucky uh, on some of these projects. I just happened to be alive and there when they came up, you know, like Miller Park. Um, but. I'm going to talk just a little bit, just briefly, about um, this body here. Uh, and, and I'll refer to the, the Swimby program. And Mickey, you know what I'm going to say. You know, many, many years ago, I mean, I had the privilege of working here on, on the island and, and, and working on equipment and uh, building projects on, uh, uh, back in the 80s when the deep tunnel was going in, so I had that uh, you know, that le electrical experience. I, I watched copper wire turn green like overnight. And uh, I'm well aware of all of the corrosive conditions that exist. And I want to tell you that for the equipment that we have to last as long as it has, is uh, it's, it's incredible that we've maintained this facility the way we have because, um, well, I, I, I installed a, a group of uh, space heaters in the galleries one time or in the hallways between the galleries. I think by the time I got done with the last one, the other one had pretty much rotted away. So, uh, you know, uh, the construction experience was, was very, very valuable. Uh, I have to tell you, and I, and, and I have no problem with this, is that when, when you are doing construction work in a facility like this, costs are maybe three, four, five times higher than they would be when um, you're building a regular facility or a commercial building or an industrial plant or something like that. And a lot of it has to do with corrosive conditions. The SWEMB program. Um, I became the building trades president and, and uh, uh, got together with a, a group of people, a collaboration, and, and um, made a bid for the uh, uh, minority Business Development Training Program here at uh, the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewage District, a program that had been in uh, existence for a number of years and really uh, was not that fruitful, and it was a big grant. It was about 1.2, 1.2 million, 1.4 million, something like that. It was up there a year for four years. I had no idea <laughs> how to run a workforce development program. I was a union rep, and so... Uh, I uh, learned a very, very valuable lesson early on um, uh, and uh, uh, feared that I might go to jail at one time because there was some money that had disappeared, but we managed to account for all of the dollars and uh, it was just really poor accounting on our part, but uh, it, it wound up in me firing every single person that I had working and starting anew and um, creating a, a, an organization that I think the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewage District was proud of in terms of the work that we did and the number of people that we helped. Um, and also, uh, it taught us many lessons, good and from, from our successes and from our failures. We learned how to put together a swim bee program like the, the likes of the one that we have here today. And I think that, and Mickey, I know she, she doesn't look old enough at all, but she was one of my monitors. Okay, so um, it was it was a successful program. We did well with it. Um, the lessons learned, as I said, helped to set up the the program that we have in place here. So that's a wonderful thing. 
we continue to work on, and, and I don't know of a whole lot of governmental entities that do this, but we continue to work on projects that um, are ecologically um, wonderful, and we continue to work on projects that um, uh, utilize uh, uh, existing resources or new resources, landfill gas, that sort of thing, to, to, to turn our turbines and and create electricity and save our ratepayers uh, those dollars and um, they've been very expensive endeavors and sometimes you don't know for a really really long time whether they're going to pay off but uh, I think we're uh, there. We're great stewards of the environment. Um, the land that we have the, along the waterways uh, is, is kept in pristine condition although we should probably find a way to make use of that and, make some more money so that we can save the repairs money. And then finally, um, there's the staff and, and this body of people here. I've seen a lot of commissioners come and go. They, I can't think of one I didn't like. And for me, that's really <laughs> <laughs> But it has been a wonderful experience. This commission has been very, very responsible, I think, to its, to its uh, constituencies. I got to thank Tom Barrett for appointing me to this commission. I, I hope I served the, the city of Milwaukee well and the interests of the city of Milwaukee. I certainly never received a complaint from the mayor since he appointed me, so uh, I, I want to thank him for doing, doing that because without him, I wouldn't be here. And uh, finally, Kevin, thanks a lot. You're a great guy. Um, uh, you're, you're fun to work with. Um, you're a great steward of the environment. You uh, run a show here that is filled with integrity. And uh, that's something that's very rare these days as well. And so with that, um, I'll, I'll uh, take my leave. Thank you so much. It really has been a pleasure. I, I, I was thinking on the way this morning, to on the way here, um, uh, if I could remember at any one time where I came in here in nine years' time and had a bad meeting. I came in here hungover plenty of times. <laughs> <laughs> but it was never a bad meeting. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, um, that really goes to all of you. Mark uh, really explained finances to a guy like me in a way that made me really uh, understand at least part of what he was doing. And, made it capable for me to, to um, you know, make the sell, although it wasn't a hard sell every year when we have our public hearings and that sort of thing. But thank you, too. Uh, I learned a lot from you guys. Um, uh, where's Mike Martin? Mike, uh, Mike knows the kind of trouble I used to get into. Uh, um, I had a general president uh, of a, a building trades general president say some very derogatory things about me one time because... I was forced to settle a jurisdictional dispute between unions, and it was over a project here at the island, and that was a painful experience. <clears throat> but we got through that, too. And uh, uh, everything you guys do here is first class, in my opinion. And I, I once again, I thank you. It's been a pleasure. See ya. <laughs>
morning, Commissioners. Morning. Patrick Goldenhoff, District Manager of Contract Compliance. Scott Royer, Fiolia General Manager, uh, with the Operations and Maintenance Report for March. Relative to the water reclamation facilities, we are in full compliance with our Wisconsin Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permit. VLA was in full compliance with the operations and maintenance agreement. We did not have any combined sewer or separate sewer overflows. Uh, and obviously then our percent capture to date is 100%. Okay, this table shows the both the influent and effluent characteristics of both water reclamation facilities, and they're all within their normal parameters. This graph shows Jones Island effluent biochemical oxygen demand and total suspended solids over the course of the last 13 months, and you can see it's well within the permit limit as well as the contract limit. This shows South Shore effluent BOD and TSS, and again, we're well below the permits and contract limits. This shows both Jones Island and South Shore effluent fecal coliform, and we're well below the, uh, the contract limit. And this shows Jones Island effluent total phosphorus. Again, we're well below the monthly permit limit. This shows the South Shore total effluent phosphorus. Again, we're below the six-month limit uh, for the last 13 months. Moving to the conveyance and storage system, uh, we had a little bit of a wet March uh, with just over an inch more than average for storm events, 500-some uh, million uh, gallons put into the tunnel. Again, no combined sewer or separate sewer overflow events. And I just noticed we have, a, it seems like a juxtaposition there, the 517 million uh, gallons related to storm and 509 million gallons total. Uh, that inconsistency is, I'm sure, due to inaccuracies in measurement. Typically, the total is slightly larger than the storm event, in case anybody was wondering. <laughs> uh, the graph of the precipitation, again, you can just see the March uh, total was slightly <coughs> above average. And moving into biosolids production, uh, production continued steady, um, although March was a little bit below what we expected. Silo inventory ended down at about 1,000 tons in the silos, as you can see in the bottom part of the graph. Uh, we do anticipate the um, production for the total year will end up exceeding the 40,000 ton request of our marketing group. Uh, product quality was still excellent for both size and nutrients. This shows the maintenance backlog for PM work orders as well as CM work orders over 90 days, and um, we certainly like to see them trend that direction. Uh, unfortunately, we had one recordable injury in March. <clears throat> We'd be glad to take any questions. Question from the commission. Seeing none, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. <clears throat> Next up is the Operations Committee report. Uh, Commissioner Krieger, would you lead us through that, please? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the Operations Committee did meet and considered three different items. Um, they are listed on the agenda, and they uh, were reviewed, and all were remit recommended to be forwarded to the com full commission for approval. And uh, unless there's any questions, I will make that motion to approve items one, two, and three. I believe it's three. Yes. Have you the, uh, um, approval by Commissioner Krieger. Second. The second by uh, Commissioner West. Is there further discussion on the block? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is carried as a block. And so <coughs> is there further uh, report from the Operations Committee? No, that concludes the report for today. Thank you, Commissioner Krieger. Uh, Commissioner Manzanet, would you lead us through the Policy Personnel Finance Committee report? 
Yes, thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> the Policy and Finance Commercial Com Committee uh, met and have items four, five, and six. Um, all items were reviewed and uh, were brought to the committee for approval. I'll entertain, if there's any questions, I'll entertain a motion for approval. Second. You, you motion for approval. I uh, motion for approval. Second. Thank you. The uh, motion is made by uh, Commissioner Manzanet, second by Commissioner Bull. Is there further discussion on these items? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Is there any opposed? The motion is carried and is so ordered. We also have one uh, other item, item number seven. 16-048-4, uh, the authorization of transfer of funds and the 2015 operations and maintenance budget. This needs, uh, requires a two-third affirmative vote from the commissions for adoption. You so move? Uh, so move. Second. Thank you. The, the uh, motion by Commissioner Manzanet, the second by Commissioner Krieger. Will the clerk, uh, will the secretary please call the uh, roll? Commissioner Bull? Aye. Commissioner Eli? Aye. Commissioner Gramling? Aye. Commissioner Harris Dodd? Aye. Commissioner Krieger? Aye. Commissioner Manzanet? Aye. Commissioner Martinsek? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Hermes? Aye. Matters approved. Thank you. That'll be <clears throat> all for the Policy and Finance Personnel Committee at this point. Thank you, Commissioner Manzanet. I do like your new role as chairman. <laughs> trying to get used to big shoes to fill. They are big shoes to fill, but you'll do just fine. Uh, organization administration today, uh, executive director's report. Good morning, commissioners. We do have uh, several items this morning. Item D, we're going to hold till next month. So uh, we'll just uh, we'll start out with two reports from Jeff Spence. First being the semiannual economic development report. Good morning, Commissioners. Jeff Spence, uh, Director of Community Outreach and Business Engagement. Um, just like to briefly go through the Economic Development Report uh, from last time. I believe it was October-ish uh, until now. Actually, recap in 2015. So our 2015 Swimby participation uh, ended up at 32.7 percent. Uh, uh, that was uh, excellent work by, by staff and the folks at Veolia contributed to this number. Um, it's one of the highest uh, participations that we've seen in some time. Uh, just breakdown for MMSD uh, only, uh, a le little over $11.5 million. Uh, you see the major categories there, A&E, construction, professional services, general services and commodities and just a sense as to what this looks like over the last seven years um, so if you you looked at it at a uh, an average uh, about 23 23.2 uh, percent annual average for participation uh, uh, I'm sorry, I can't see the screen from here. I don't have my glasses. Uh, so I think that's a little over 16.6 uh, .6 million on average over the last seven years. Uh, spend uh, with, uh, within our sewer service area and within the uh, M7 region uh, still remains strong, over 50% spend within the sewer service area and over 60 percent in the m7 region uh if convert that to dollars uh over 50 percent of dollars that we expend uh go within uh inside the sewer service area and 72 percent within the m7 region just a little update on other policies uh, other commission policies that we uh put in effect in in any of our projects on construction bids, uh, apprentice utilization, we had eight projects, or 12 apprentices were, uh, were part of those projects, uh, and 17 of those projects required local worker requirements. Uh, in terms of uh, professional services or proposals, we had 28 proposals, and 24 of those had local office, office preference elements. 
Just a little bit uh, an update on on uh, past networking event. Uh, at the end of uh, middle of October, we had a networking event uh, with uh, hosted with the city, and we had some hundred hundred and fifty uh, firms that were represented there. So we continue to show strong support within the um, business community and an interest in the work that we're doing and networking with other firms, larger firms, that are part of our business mix. Uh, 2016 bit, uh, benchmarks. I'm not sure if you got the quarterly report. Um, should have received it. This is just an update on that. We're tracking well. 21.2% uh, uh, Swimby participation on those awards during the first quarter. Um, and let's see here. Uh, just jump down to the bottom because I think that that's the other interesting piece of this. And that's dollars awarded within uh, the service area. Um, 68.7%. So we're doing well on those metrics at this point. Um, we, as well as the city and a number of other organizations are doing a lot during um, uh, Small Business Week. Uh, that's May 2nd. And so our goal is to really um, create a buzz about small businesses in the area, get them networking. Um, these functions will be held at Manpower, and I'd invite you all to attend the mixer that's coming up. You'll get an invitation on that. Uh, again, we really want people to understand our work and try to find ways to draw um, more diversity of businesses within what we do. At that point, I'm open for any questions. Questions from the commission. Thank you. Um, Jeff, I'm sorry. The, the, one of the earlier slides showed the, the percentage spend being significantly higher in 2015 from the last several years. D did you cite a reason for that, or can you explain what was driving that increase? Um, it's actually part of the larger projects that we've got, and so we can give you a breakdown of that if okay. you'd like. Um, our um, I know typically those kinds projects, of changes are driven by just yeah. the projects and the sense of timing typically. So if That's it's correct. just that, it might be helpful to, yeah. to have that. Those are the biggest drivers, uh, okay. production, uh, sorry, construction and uh, engineering, uh, architectural engineering design okay. elements. And, and then if I may f just follow up with a second question, since you landed on the photo of Jose, I'm uh, just curious <laughs> to know if, if your staffing has settled in or if you are still looking to fill positions created when Pete and um, Jose uh, departed the agency? We're in the process of uh, filling that position right now. Uh, okay. We've decided to uh, hire another manager for that area. Okay. All right. So I'd say by early May we should have that person on board. Identify right. a candidate and have him on board. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions? Seeing none, thank you, Jeff. Jeff's up here. The next item is his as well, the uh, annual Malorganite Marketing Report. So, um, 2016 marks the emerald anniversary of Malorganite. 90 years of uh, <coughs> greening um, uh, the country. So, I'd like to first start out with a, a short video on, uh, on Malorganite. Since 1926, Malorganite production is one of the nation's oldest and world's largest recycling programs. We're not recycling bottles, cans, or paper, but nutrients from organic matter reclaimed from wastewater using large-scale natural processes which remain as cutting-edge today as they were in the early 1900s. Rather than disposing of the resulting nutrient-rich material into landfills, Milwaukee's answer was and is to produce Malorganite, the organic nitrogen fertilizer. 
Environmental stewardship is central to Milorganite and has been for 90 years. Headquartered in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Milorganite is produced by its parent organization, the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewerage District, MMSD, a regional government agency focused on providing water reclamation and flood management. Serving more than 1.1 million customers, MMSD continues to be a national leader in green solutions, including the manufacture of Milorganite. Milwaukee. Organic. Nitrogen. Milorganite. The name resulted from a 1925 contest published in National Fertilizer Magazine. The winning entry was submitted by McIver and Son of Charleston, South Carolina. Milorganite forever changed fertilizer production and was instrumental in establishing turf grass research. It represented a true breakthrough as the first pelletized, dust-free fertilizer with multiple nutrients. Prior to this, animal manures and single nutrients were typically used as fertilizer. In the early 1900s, research began to investigate the properties of this revolutionary organic nitrogen fertilizer. This was also the beginning of turf science. To this day, protecting the environment and research to advance turf science is fundamental to Milorganite's mission. Oven Yula Noer, OJ, was instrumental in the success of Milorganite, as well as establishing the turf grass industry. He ran a soils testing lab at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, funded by Milwaukee Sewerage Commission. He was tasked with finding the beneficial uses of the recycled nutrients found in Milorganite. It was the first lab of its kind in the U.S., and some of Noer's testing protocols are still used today. Noer's extensive trials tested Milorganite on field crops, vegetables, and golf courses, all of which demonstrated superior results. He was able to demonstrate two distinct advantages no danger of burning plants, and it produced a dark green dense turf without causing excessive top growth. As word spread nationally about this new fertilizer, Noer knew it was commercially viable. Noer spent his career educating turf professionals, speaking extensively at turf conferences. He authored The ABCs of Turf Culture, which represents one of the earliest comprehensive books on the subject of turf maintenance. Noah achieved venerable stature within the turf industry when he was dubbed Mr. Turf by the Golf Course Superintendents Association of America. We are continually looking for ways to reduce energy consumption, waste and emissions while increasing our use of alternative energy sources such as solar, landfill gas and methane. Our goal is to have 80% of our energy needs supplied from renewal sources by 2035. Since 2014, our landfill gas initiative has reduced our dependence on both natural gas and electricity and will generate the majority of our energy for the next 20 years. After nine decades, we continue to produce a valuable organic nitrogen fertilizer trusted by homeowners and turf professionals. To learn more about what Milwaukee is doing to improve water quality, visit MMSD.com. And for tips on using Milorganite for lawns and gardens, visit Milorganite.com. As you can see, um, we've begun to really cross-brand Milorganite and the work that's being done. Um, in, in the district outside of our, uh, our service area. And it makes all the sense in the world if you think about the great work we're doing relative to um, greening this community. Um, Mr. Chair? Yes. Sorry. How, how is that video being used? Actually, this is on our website. Um, and we'll get to how things are driven on the website. Um, before we do that, just an update on the 2015 um, picture from Milorganite. Um, had our best selling year um, ever, $8.7 million uh, dollars in, in gross revenue, um, with expenditures of $3.4 million. So for every dollar that we expended, uh, 
marketing, Malorganite, the bagging, all of our advertising cost, we recouped two, a little over two and a half dollars. So the return on investment still remains strong. Mr. Chair? Could we let him get through his presentation mm -hmm. and then we'll go to questions? Please? Sure. Thank you. Um, again, average selling price is at an all time high, close to $200 per ton. Um, measure that against what other biosolids manufacturers are doing, and that's anywhere between two to six times as high as what they would get for a ton of uh, biosolids. Um, just about all of the uh, product that was produced last year was distributed. A little over 43,000 tons was produced, and just about all of that was distributed into a variety of markets. So our major markets, of course, are retail, which continues to grow. I think it was at about 56% of our uh, split um, last year. It's now up to 59%. Uh, the pro market, golf, golf and um, um, land uh, landscaping uh, make up that other percent and ag as a market that we use as uh, a control to make sure that we always have a spot for product that's either off um, off spec or to control our overall inventories now, this is an interesting one one can see it as a positive one can see it as a negative um, uh, 10 of our top retailers uh, hold about 70% of our, our tonnage. So this has been an area that staff, to, staff has worked really hard at, uh, at driving. Um, the retail marketplace uh, gives us our greatest return on investment. Um, and as you can see, um, we cover a variety of retail, retailers. But when you look at our box stores, um, that could be seen as a liability as well. Um, if a box store uh, decides not to carry us, there could be a hole. So we continue to work on managing the, uh, the profile of retail um, outlets. We took a 1% increase in pricing last year. You might ask, well, what drives the decision on whether or not he'll take an increase in, in pricing? So we look at a number of diff different factors, everything from what that transportation picture looks like, because that uh, adds uh, a cost to a product at retail level, to what our overall uh, our costs are for packaging and other forms of labor. Um, this is an exercise that's done about this time every year. Uh, we'll probably hold steady with pricing this year because when you look at uh, indicators such as CPI and PPI, uh, they're either down or they haven't moved a lot. So it would be difficult for us to require an increase. Um, Average price of a bag of malorganite differs depending upon uh, location. It can be as little as $6.99 in our region to as much as $24.99 um, on the west coast. The farther you go away from the Midwest, higher cost. Um, and we're beginning to see um, more and more of a push uh, by other biosolids producers and and this slide might be hard to see, but it just illustrates that we're not the only biosolids, uh, heat uh, dry pelletized biosolid producers in the US. And we've actually done much to drive competition because we believe in beneficial reuse. So this list continues to grow. <coughs> um, so much so that when you look at those lower tier markets that we've been involved with, um, we start to see some erosion of our share in that marketplace. Uh, if product is available closer to home, much cheaper, tends to be um, 
an option for folks who are not looking for branded product. Uh, promotional mix, about the same from, from last year's. Much of the work is focused on using online tactics to really educate and inspire um, current and potential users of our product to garden in a way that's much different than you see a lot of synthetic uh, manufacturers of synthetic fertilizer promote. Web statistics continue to grow. Uh, this year, we we hit over a, a million views of our pages. Um, much of that is organic. Um, I recall a conversation that we had last year relative to a search engine optimization, and there was a fair amount of work done to ensure that we were getting the most uh, out of our site through organic hits. Uh, the length of time on our website continues to be consistent, which is a good sign uh, that the content is still of interest to, uh, to folks. Um, growing area, of course, are our videos. We've got videos that sort of run the gamut from effective ways of gardening to uh, videos on our processes. Uh, there is still um, this part of the market who they're essentially concerned with biosolids and whether or not um, they're safe to use on their lawns and in their gardens. And it really benefits us to be able to explain to them why we believe that this product can add value in and uh, assure safety. Uh, we use a number of social media platforms to get the message out. Today, uh, Melinda Myers will be in and um, we'll be doing a uh, live chat through Facebook, something that we've tried this year to, to really get a sense as to whether or not um, market is warming to these sorts of, of, of tools. And we continue to invest in green industry partners that carry sway with uh, consumers. The latest on board is Joe Lample. Joe's a uh, uh, well, um, uh, a nationally renowned um, green person. Uh, he's, uh, his show is on uh, about a hundred of uh, the P uh, PBS stations around the nation. Um, we've gotten a really good response to Joe promoting Malorganite to his followers. And uh, just some other activities that we're working on, of course, really taking advantage to let people know about Malorganite, its 90-year history of uh, greening America. Um, we continue to work on developing um, markets, both geographically and um, user-type uh, markets, whether it's more gardening or uh, for uh, uh, vegetables. Um, We'll be doing more work on our website. Right now, our website is not a responsive site. So if you go on a phone and take a look at our website, that experience um, is not uh, in keeping with what you'll see with other um, advertisers. So there's um, much work that needs to be done, and I'm bringing that up to speed. Um, we are streamlining our operations since... Uh, I came on board, the, uh, our staff, our immediate staff, um, has been reduced by about a third. And the reason that that's not a problem is, is that we've been able to effectively uh, retool how we do our business um, to maximize the staff that we have on board. And we've got really smart staff members. I think they're all, some of them are sitting back there, I think. Wave. Wave, stand up, and I'll, and they probably won't stand up. <laughs> they're typically not shy, or they're not shy in telling me what we should be doing. Um, all right. Um, one of the issues that we continue to work on, because there is no uh, 
a national guidance on this is um, how states see our phosphorus. As we've talked before, uh, our phosphorus is uh, a type that is not apt to uh, migrate through um, the soil profile and end up in our waterways. That would be quite the contradiction for an organization that's responsible for affecting, positively affecting waterways. So part of our goal is to get legislators and regulators to understand uh, the nature of the phosphorus and malorganite and create allies and in reshaping some of the state policies that would inhibit people from using product. Um, product specifications as we do a better job of taking phosphorus out of wastewater, it has to go someplace. It goes into our biosolids. And again, um, that may change our specifications. So we're looking at what our specifications would look like in the future. So we'll be making some decisions on that within a couple of months. And we continue to work with partners in research and industry to uh, better understand issues such as emerging contaminants in, uh, in biosolids. So with that, I'll entertain any questions. Um, I think the first or second slide that you showed us with the it being the highest uh, year in revenues that we've had. Yes. Um, is there anything specific that we're attributing that to? Um, much more sales going into the retail marketplace. Um, so sales were up by <laughs> some a little under 10% overall, and much of that was attributed to retail. Are we um, estimating um, in the coming year that that will sustain or like are we likely to see a chart go down next year you know what I mean there are a couple of factors that can impact that um, weather is always a factor if you have a great spring um, it continues to drive sales um, uh, supply of product went in with a healthy supply of product last year uh, this year has been somewhat of a challenge but we're working through it um, so there's just a number of issues that can impact that number. We budget it at, I believe, seven point, around 7.8 million. And that's typically a conservative figure. You look at the last three years, you average that. And, and the reason we do that is because um, we don't want to create issues with our overall financials by really having a rosy or optimistic revenue picture and not delivering on that. Um, what percentage of the sales were online? Uh, if you think about fertilizer, uh, it's very <laughs> difficult to sell a fertilizer online. Right, and, right. Yeah, the, the cost of shipping a bag is more than the cost of a bag of fertilizer. Mm -hmm. So do we sell online? There are some uh, outlets that sell online. For instance, Home Depot will promote the product online. Okay. Um, I think last year in our discussions about the social media stuff, there was some talk of you all getting, I think, an intern or something that you wanted to handle it. Um, has that happened? And how has that gone? And if not, how are we handling the social media? Yes, so we did just recently bring on an intern to help us with that. This is the season where a lot of the actual work it gets taken care of. So we would hope that we'd be in a better uh, situation to manage that. There's one other tool that we believe offers some help in managing uh, across platforms, and that's Hootsuite. So the ability to take a message that you use in one platform and apply it across a number of platforms should um, actually help us in managing those things. Thank you. Mr. West, uh, thank you. Could you go back to that revenue expense slide? Sure. Uh, in your remarks, I thought I heard that you characterized the expense side as the marketing expense. I mean, it was pretty clear to me that there are some expenses associated with taking biosolids 
dewatering them, drying them, packet, uh, sorting, grading, <laughs> screening, etc., yes. bagging, getting them into a warehouse are not here. And so I'm not suggesting that we do every cost because we would dewater almost in any event, I assume. But um, I just wanted to make sure that, that folks didn't get the wrong idea uh, on the red lines. So I like the gap, but it's just a matter of making sure that we're expressing this correctly. We are not questioning at all, because Malorganite's a great idea. It's a 90-year-old great idea. So I just wanted, if you, if you could just shed a little bit of light on this slide. Sure. Uh, and what expenses it reflects, and uh, and I'm only look, I, know, I really only want to talk about incremental expenses. If you, right. So that line actually is after um, the expense figure uh, figure is after the product is produced. Any other cost after that are absorbed in that expense. And produced, it means in bulk or bagged? In bulk. Uh, in what bulk. I'm referring to is after, after it's dried and right. placed in the silo, anything after that, distributing, uh, packaging, all of those costs are part of that $3.4 million. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for that clarification because I wasn't quite sure. Uh, so, okay, well, that is a really good story then. Thank you. Yes. We, we'd like to think so, right, Don? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Okay. Further questions? Thank you. And I have one other um, item to cover, um, and it's connected with Malorganite. Uh, so this, uh, this spring, um, the region hosted uh, the Residuals and Biosolids Conference. Um, put on by the Water Environmental Federation. Um, it's a big deal to have a conference like this in Milwaukee, especially on Malorganite's 90th anniversary. Uh, Rusty Schradel, Rusty, why don't you come on up to the table? Rusty's with AECOM, <laughs> yes. Um, Rusty and I co-chaired the conference this year. Um, and Rusty, you can correct my numbers if I'm wrong, approximately 700 or so participants at the conference uh, covering um, topics ranging from um, the legal aspects and regulatory aspects of, of uh, beneficial reuse of biosolids to energy um, to um, new technologies uh, for wastewater treatment and hand biosolids handling. Um, approximately 20 or so district uh, personnel participated in the conference in a variety of ways from um, actually um, presenting in workshops um, and in sessions uh, and uh, the tours at Jones Island. We had over 50 wastewater professionals who were really interested in seeing up close and personal uh, the Malorganite facility and our, uh, our energy producing um, turbines. Uh, Rusty, did you want to add anything? Yeah, if I may, Jeff, thank you. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, I'm Rusty Schradel with AECOM. I work out of our office here in Milwaukee. And actually, I've had the privilege on working on district projects since the 1970s, late 1970s. Um, the Water Environment Federation that sponsors this conference, the Residuals and Biosolids Conference, uh, it's one of their what they call specialty conferences rather than their large major one. It's the longest running of their specialty conferences. This was the 30th annual. Um, there was 18 technical sessions, three workshops, and as Jeff mentioned, over 700 people. Uh, I want to mention in addition, there was uh, somewhere in the vicinity of 50 exhibitors, many of whom brought in full-size equipment for professionals to see. Uh, professionals came here not only from the United States, but from Canada, Asia, Europe. I didn't check the list to see if there was anyone from Africa or South America, but uh, so this is truly an international conference. 
I really want to thank uh, the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewers District and specifically uh, Kevin Schaefer for support and Jeff as co-chair, as well as Scott Royer and Veolia for their assistance in helping line up the tours at the plant. Um, I had a bet with the coordinator from the Water Environment Federation. I said, people are going to want to see Mill Organite. You're going to need more than one bus. We arranged for a second bus the morning when the tours went in the afternoon. It was of that much interest to professionals literally worldwide. So um, I was very pleased to have worked on this. This is a traveling trophy. We don't get to keep it. Uh, it it's uh, got Jeff's name on it as well as mine as uh, co-chairs. Uh, and this will need to get shipped out somewhere around February for next year's conference, which hopefully some district staff can attend. That one will be in Seattle, Washington. But uh, so I would just want to thank the commission for the support, uh, the district for the support, and Veolia for the support. Thank you. Yeah. And <coughs> once again, I just want to thank uh, staff that participated in, in the conference. People think, well, there's only a small group of folks in the organization who are interested in this and take part in <coughs> the uh, Malorganite activities. Uh, the whole organization is taking part in Malorganite, Malorganite activities. So um, while there may only be a few people who are um, directly uh, on, on a day-to-day -day basis focused on selling Malorganite, uh, there is a support group that goes well beyond that group. I should have mentioned that is referred to as the biosolids bucket. <laughs> Should be filled with them organized. That's it for that item. All right. The last item, like I said, we'll uh, we'll hold off on the park property I and I until uh, next meeting. The last item on the uh, open session is then adopt a river program. We are uh, a week from Thursday is the Clean Rivers, Clean Lakes Conference at Discovery World. If you would like to go, please let Anna know and she can register you for that. It's an all day conference. I don't know how many years we've done this, but several years we've had this discussion. It's a regional conference having people from around the, uh, the state and actually the region come to talk about uh, clean water efforts. And they usually get 300 or so, 250, 300 people to come to that conference. So a week from Thursday, we're going to announce this Adopt a River program where we're going to ask companies that have um, staff or people that want to volunteer to come out and uh, pick up litter and do other things on, on reaches of the river. Just like Adopt a Highway, it will be Adopt a River so they can adopt different reaches of the, of the river and then um, do uh, some cleanups along the way. We have a, uh, the uh, river skimmer going out every year, collecting it once it gets to the, uh, the waterways. Um, hopefully we can try to reduce some of that load there and, and work upstream a little bit. So we'll be announcing that uh, next week and um, probably taking people to sign up the rest of this year and then really kick it off next year with implementation. But I wanted to let the commission know about that. And that's it for open and we do have closed session. Someone lead us into a closed session uh, motion. <coughs> Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to go into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.85 and for the purposes of set forth on the published notice and agenda. Second. And the uh, motion to go into closed session by Commissioner Gramley, second by Commissioner West. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We'll go into closed session after a four minute recess. An MCM production.